Hello and welcome back to the El Diablo tutorial series. I'm Michael and this time around we will create the materials, the animations, uh, the animation blueprint, uh, blend spaces and generally set up the mesh correctly in the El Diablo car blueprint. Um, for the people who didn't watch the part 2 part and skipped it, um, in the video description below will be a download link. It will be called Toot Assets 1. There are three assets in there in total and we just imported them here. Uh, we created just a new folder, uh, folder called Animations under the El Diablo content folder and we created another folder called Mesh. In the Mesh folder we have the tutorial car mesh, the tutorial car mesh physics asset, and the tutorial car mesh skeleton. In the animations folder, we have the tutorial car idle animation and the tutorial car walk animation. Please import them uh, so we can continue, or that you that you can continue. Now, for the other people, or all of your people who maybe watched the part two or not, um. We have another download link in the video description called Toot Assets 2. So please um, download this link, open your Toot Assets 2 and extract it to a folder you want. Then go into the folder and um, already select them. You can drag and drop or import but um, let's first create a new material folder. So create a new folder in, under the El Diablo content folder and call it material. Go into the material folder and drag and drop the Neri normal TGA or the Neri, uh, and the Neri text TGA or go onto the import, navigate to your asset folder or your um, your extracted folder and select both and open them. Now we wait a little bit. Okay, now we have our textures in here. Well, the easiest way to create a new material is by right clicking on the Neri text and click create material. It will basically take the name, which we have here, and add a suffix with MAT, which stands for material. Double click on the Neri text material, and we will already have this Neri text um, texture plugged into the base color. We can, you can also easily do it um, with or by um, scaling our material into it our window, drag in the Neri text, the texture here, and it will create automatically a texture sample. And then you can connect the white dot with the base color. So that's the other way you can do it. But we already have it automatically plugged in into here, and that's fine. Now we have different properties here. Metallic basically just stands for how um, how much it uh, resembles metal or should re resemble metal. Um, a value of zero will not do anything. It will a non-metal material. Uh, um, a value of one will make it a metal object, basically. So. And it's, it's only constrained in the range of 0 and 1. You can't go over it. Um, the specular, basically you don't need to um, worry about that. Um, just in some more convoluted or more complex cases, um, it will be useful. So we just use the standard value. Um, and roughness is basically how 
Um, how shiny the surface should look like. So a value of zero would be complete shiny, or completely shiny, uh, and a value of one will be completely diffuse. So it doesn't shine at all. It just has has a very blin lighting to it. Okay, but because we have here closing and such, um, we will go with a roughness value of around 0.4. Maybe, yeah, 0.4. And the metal value will be on zero. We don't have any uh, metal objects on our clothing or in our texture, so we can um, use the zero value for the metallic value. Um, one thing I want to mention, you don't have to plug in values here. You can also have uh, dedicated maps for it and um, have some, well, grayscale values where you can plug it in and control it with a texture instead of a value. But in this uh, tutorial we will just create values, standard values, because the other things you can read, read up and there's a lot of documentation out there where you can get these informations. It will take way too much time to, to explain it here. Okay, do we have an emissive color? Emissive color just means does it glow? Well, um, we don't want anything to glow right now. So this will be unaffected by this here. Um, a value of zero to one will not do anything. It will just basically um, be like you have a diffuse um, light from all sides the same way. So it always have the same value. It, it will not be affected by darkness or by, by lightning or shadows in any way. Um, if you go over one, any value over one, two, four or eight or anything like this will basically make it glow. So if you put something in here as an emissive color, uh, mostly it will be a texture. Um, yeah, basically um, values over one will make it glow and you will plug it in the emissive color. But we, will don't, uh, we won't use it here in this, um, uh, in this case. Now we have the normal and normal is actually something called bump mapping. Bump mapping or bump textures contain depth information. So it actually creates a, an illusion of depth. So you don't need to spend as much polygon, uh, polygons to uh, create um, well depth into a model or cavities in a model. So we already have our Neri normal imported. So drag uh, or cl left click, drag and drop it into the, f uh, the material editor. And we will have a texture sample here too. Just plug the white uh, pin into the normal white pin and we are good to go. So for the people who know something called parallax mapping, um, here's the step how you get this working. So take something called a bump offset, make a copy of the texture, of the diffuse texture, take the red pin and put it into the height variable, select the bump offset, go into height ratio and give it a value like 0 0.003. Don't make it too high because it will create um, a swimming, texture swimming. And we don't want that. So then we take the Y pin from the bump offset, plug it into the UV text, uh, UVS pin in the texture sample, and we plug it in into the UVS input from the te uh, texture sample normal map. Okay, we are good to go. And we have parallax mapping already um, built in. Okay, 
just minimize it or make it smaller, save it. And yeah, then it will save. Now we have our material. Um, the next thing we want to do is to give the character or the mesh actually our material. Do that by going to the mesh folder, double click the total car mesh, and click on this here. On the non on the material slot and click on near retest material do it here too do it here too here too just fill in all these material ids and remember the less material ids you have the better and just save it you can close it it will just recompile like shadows compiling and uh, the material will show up in time. Now we will go into the LDW content folder and then we will select and open our LDW car blueprint. So we will be met with, with such a window and you might think, where is the full editor? Well, this is just a simplified view. So if you want to see the full blueprint editor, just click here on open full blueprint editor and we need it. So we are right back here. Click on viewport, select your mesh component and go on the right panel under the mesh section and select our tutorial car mesh. It will be pretty tiny, so we need to scale it up. The blue pin here, or the, the blue arrow here, which is inbuilt in our uh, character blueprint, will show you which direction the capsule is facing or the actor is facing. So the first thing is we click our mesh and we rotate it. You can do it with the E key or by clicking on this button here. Just rotate it 90 degrees and then click R for scaling or click just this button and scale it up. So it will basically fit into the capsule. Okay, now when we're done with it, we, create, uh, we press the W key. Uh, or we uh, click this button here and then we move her up a little bit and go a little bit closer so they actually align up properly with the capsule the problem is you can only make it in increments so it moves only in increments and we might want to have it down the capsule button so you won't have a floating mesh so in order to do that you can disable this here just click on it and it will be disabled this grid like thing and you can move it how you want it will not make a uh, move in increments anymore just so it touches the capsule the bottom of the capsule then enable the snapping or the grid snapping again and compile and save. Now we have the right orientation. Wonderful, we have it set up right now. Okay, close it and I will see you in part four.